Hello, hi, assalamualaikum, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pam on Seminar. I am Kamalia Maisara Binti Norman. I will be your MC and as well as moderator for today. So today's topic, mainstreaming gender equality and its challenges. And we would like to say a huge thanks to Bank Islam for sponsoring today's event. So I am pleased to remind you that this lecture can be watched via garispixel.co Facebook Live, but do note that CPD Fund is not applicable for Facebook Live platforms. So if you wish to get CPD points, kindly email to pamonlineseries at gmail.com to get the registration link and kindly log in using your Zoom application. All right, so before we begin, allow me to read out some house rules for this online seminar. So first of all, what you're seeing on your, on your screen right now is a sign-in code, right? So the sign-in and sign-out code will pop out on your screen for 20 minutes. What you have to do is you need to write down copy or memorize the code and fill out the questionnaire form that will be projected on the screen at the end of the webinar. So um, just to remind you that simply clicking on the poll does not indicate that you have signed in or signed out. And the second one is any form of screen recording, sharing or reproducing the content of this lecture in audio or writing is prohibited. So ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to share a bit with you about our seminar today, about the topic today, and also to introduce our speaker. All right, to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls is the fifth goal out of 17 sustainable development goals listed by the United Nations. So it is mentioned that the UN recognized that to end poverty and other deprivations, the effort must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health, and education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth. As a developing country, gender equality plays a huge role, especially when our country needs more skill and manpower resources to boost the country's economic growth. This presentation is meant to create awareness by introducing the gender concept and how mainstreaming gender can be applied into practice. So a little bit about our speaker today, architect Sharon graduated in 2008 with Bachelor of Architecture from University of Technology Malaysia. In 2017, she opens her own practice, Sharon M. Armin Architect. She had been actively involved in PAM activities since 2010 and was the graduate representative in 2010 and 2016. She continues to serve the chapter committee in 2017 after joining the corporate membership. Architect Sharon is currently the honorary secretary in PAM Sabah chapter for 2021 and 2022. So in 2029, Architect Sharon participated in the Gender and Development Workshop organized by JHEWA Jabatan Hal Ehwal Wanita Sabah as a participant. And in 2020, she was selected to be trained as certified trainer by JHWA JHEWA and attended the Train the Trainers Workshop Gender in Development. Other than that, the same year, she also attended this, the Disability Equality Training Workshop organized by Sabah Social Welfare Department. And she hoped that her involvement will help to create awareness and solutions to some of the problems, issues uh, faced by the community. So it is a huge hope that we use this platform to actually discuss about our topic today, you know, the mainstreaming gender equality and feel free to chat down um, if you have any comments and if you have any questions, kindly put down your questions in the Q&A session so that during the Q&A session, we can actually discuss about it with Architect Sherry. So without further delay, I am passing the floor to Architect Sherry to start with the lecture. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kamalia, for the great introduction. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow architects, family and friends. Yeah, I believe some of you also log in to support. Thank you. Okay, thank you for joining us today to learn and understand about this effort. So uh, mainstreaming gender equity and its challenges. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Mainstreaming gender equality and its challenges. Okay, my name is Sharon M. Amin. Okay, this is me. And I open up, yeah, as introduced earlier on, I open up my own practice, Sharon M. Amin Architect, in 2017. 
And just a little bit of background, how I come into this um, gender equality training. So back in 2019, I was selected um, by, we were actually invited, Pam Sabah chapter was actually invited to participate in this gender development training. So as usual, they straight away think that, oh, this is about gender. So the stereotype thinking was, we need to send women. So woman architect was sent to this training. So you can see me there, the training and workshop and with our trainer, we are having a discussion and some um, ideas thrown up during the workshop. And I, at first I thought that this topic is going to talk about just policy, just in a meeting room setting, but to my surprise that they actually have site visit, inspection, very much like our own architectural practice. We actually inspect building and to see um, what are the things that, how gender actually can affect our everyday life, our environment. So it's very interesting actually to suddenly know that how gender actually also applicable in our architecture. And after the inspection, we also have dialogue. We also have discussion with the building management. Uh, we share actually on our findings. What do we find? What are the things that need to be improved in order for people to be able to utilize the facilities better? And of course, after every visit, we wanted a group photo. And not only that, we actually go back to the hall, uh, to the hotel, and actually to complete the analysis and presentation. We, the training actually take this very seriously. And after we present our finding analysis and we present it, the reason why we need to present is actually to test how far we actually understand about this gender issue, uh, what this gender agenda. And um, we were uh, given explanation and also, um, trained to produce some solution in some of the problems. Okay, before I go further, I would like to special mention thanks to this Jabatan Hal Ewal Wanita Sabah, or we call them Jewa, because they have organized this four days training, train the trainer workshop, and they also published this train the trainer manual and teaching plan. Actually, my presentation today is using this teaching material. Okay, when they have this workshop, they also involve the state government ministries, the local authorities, the professional bodies, and the NGO. So Pam Sabah chapter is one of the prof professional bodies that was invited. And our gender expert, our trainer is Dr. Dr. Tengku Naufal. He is the one that monitoring our progress. And I would also would like to mention Pam Gender Equity Committee. Um, I currently also the member of the, this committee and they have organized, they actually initiate this seminar today in order to create awareness among our fraternity. And for those who don't know, we actually have a PAM declaration on gender equity in architecture. Uh, this declaration is actually the adoption from the UIA gender equity policy in architecture. And we also have PAM policy. Um, just check out our PAM website. Okay, when we talk about gender, actually it all started with this um, SDG, also known as the Sustainable Development Goal by the United Nations. And gender equality is actually the goal number five. Um, from the collection of the 17 interlinked global goals, the reason for this global goal is actually to have a to achieve better and more sustainable future for all so okay before i move further to our modules um i would like to explain also this um uh, in order to understand the gender uh, in development or gender equality concept we actually undergo um, some training. So the training actually consists of four modules. So you can see here module number one, gender intro uh, introduction to gender concept and it's relevant in development. Module number two, applying the gender lens in development. So for those who didn't know also, actually this module one and module two, we have already done this um, in our last CPD Unlimited um, in last February. So we have explained what is a gender concept. Basically it's about, um, yeah, um, what is gender stereotype and applying gender lens is how do we use our knowledge to actually analyze and view all the our surrounding. 
today is about the mainstreaming gender equality and its challenge, challenges, and I'm going to share later on today. And the last module is about current issues, gender in development, but we are not going there um, for today because the module three itself is uh, it's actually a long topic. Okay, just a run through module one, um, just a recap, introduction to gender concept and it's relevant in development. So I think the, the main question is, um, what's the difference between gender and sex? So gender is more about concept, perception, sex is facts, biology. And in this module, we actually talk about stereotype gender, for example, um, okay, boys wear blue, girls wear pink, stereotyping. Uh, men do the hard work, women do the uh, easier work, or women just a housewife, uh, men go outside and work. So that's a stereotype. And we also talk about uh, sensitivity gender, meaning to say the development or the design of our surrounding, are they sensitive gender? Um, we also talk about gender blind and gender neutral and etc. And the next was shared by our friend, architect Tracy Yap applying the gender lens in development. So applying gender lens is basically taking all the knowledge from the module one and try to analyze the things that is existing today. For example, um, the design of the toilet, uh, is it enough? Um, currently, one of the issues is that um, the toilet was equally divided among male and female. And there's always a long queue in the female toilet. So these are whether these are one of the indicator whether the gender um, agenda here is um, taken into consideration when designing a toilet, and applying gender lens is basically using the the knowledge or the gender um, awareness to perceive the things around us. So we can look at design of our environment, the development, the policy using the gender lens and to analyze. Uh, the issues out of it. Okay, before we go through the module three, I would like to present to you a case story about this Asanang Bridge. Kampung Togus, you can see a few houses. There is a river, there is a wooded bridge existing. And you can see that their car is all parked across the river, just next to the main highway. So, I'm introducing you. This is the Ketua Kampung. And he is assisted by a few leaders of the village also. Kapitan Masyarakat China and also JPKK, the Jabatan Pembangunan uh, Kebajikan uh, Keselamatan Kampung. So they are the leaders of the village. And one day, the chief informed that Okay, there's an info from the district office. Um, why we managed to secure budget of 1 million for Kampung Togus infrastructure upgrade. The consultant need our requirement brief. Okay, I can do the paperwork. And JPKK said, okay, we need a concrete bridge. So let's create a committee project. Okay, but if you can see that there's only men. So they asked men only and the group actually answered back, okay, women are not interested because they do not have time. Okay, these are their women at home. And women normally busy looking after their kids and managing the house chores. They have no time to be involved in the meeting. However, no matter how busy they are, they can always get together and chit chat among themselves. So they found out about their husband going for a project meeting. And they also start to discuss among themselves. You know what? There is no Jabatan Air Water Supply source obtained directly from the river manually. And one of them say, yeah, and there's no permanent electricity. We are all using generator. Another say, water pollution problem. We need filter system. Yeah, considering that they taking a water directly from the river. Hey, there's no Wi-Fi. Kids unable to join online classes during MCO. The nearest health clinic is far away. Elderly children always fall sick. No stable phone line. Hard to make phone call during emergency. We need fans. 
around the village for safety. Yeah, we are women. We are here most of the time. And we need a proper stall area on the roadside to do business. Uh, example, selling vegetable or nasi lemak, et cetera. So as you can see, these are some of the examples the women discuss among themselves. However, if you ask them, um, why are they not joining the committee, uh, the project committee? Ladies, I think our men are aware with all the issues we mentioned just now, let them handle the meeting and make the decision. Some of them say, agree, even if we join them, they might say that we are trying to outsmart them. And some actually, in the opinion that we are busy with the housework and kids and want us to join the committee, can't they do the paperwork themselves? So another part says that, yeah, they can join, but the fear of, you know, the perception of the guys, whether to allow them to join or not. Whereas the other part, they just do not want to care because they have a lot of things in their hand at the moment. So we go back to the guys. They are also discussing the issues in the meeting. So they come up with a lot of uh, brainstorming ideas. Okay, the car park across the river because there's no bridge for the vehicle. Yeah, and the risk of car and property inside the vehicle stolen, no surveillance. Okay, why not we propose concrete bridge? Wooden bridge won't last long. Yeah, and property disturbed and damaged by wild animals. They are talking about the property inside their vehicles. Okay, Premix Road up to the house front, not enough parking area across the river. We have 1 million, why not we also add proposed Kampung Togus Arch Gateway? Oh, that's good. Okay, why not we invite YB to officiate as well? So we organize banquet. Hey, we need to involve the woman so women can help with the preparation. So come the day, the YB is there, the district officer is there, and they hand over the requirement brief. And come the day that the construction is done, and now they have the Premix Road, they have the Asanang Bridge, and they have the archway, all what they wanted. And on the ceremony day, opening ceremony, the YB is there, okay? So you can see that the people are satisfied, but suddenly behind there are some of them that not really satisfied. So the chief, the Koto Kampung said, YB, we are very grateful, thank you. And YB said, you're welcome. But the district officer noticed something, mm, those behind doesn't seem to be satisfied. Almost half of the Kampung Togus people not satisfied with the upgrade, why? So. And their observation was almost all the women not satisfied. So it become a question mark uh, between the YB and the district officer. Okay, now question. What did you learn from the case story of Asanang Bridge in Kampung Togus? Did the problem or situation in Kampung Togus solved by the upgrade of infrastructure financed by the government. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to leave you with this question to ponder upon, okay? And um, yeah, I leave this question for you to ponder upon. And let's take five for now before we move on to the next part, which is the module three. Okay, thank you. Go back to you, Carmela. Okay, welcome back. So, yeah, just now some comment actually, I um, passed the slide too fast. And yeah, I was expecting we uh, completed within 30 minutes and we take five, but maybe I presented a bit fast. So we go back to the question, what did you learn from the case story of Asanang Bridge in Kampung Togus? And did the problem or situation in Kampung Togus solved by the upgrade of infrastructure financed by the government? So when we ponder upon this question, actually I'm expecting you for those who know about this gender, gender lens, um, try to see this question um, 
having a gender agenda in your mind. Um, in other words, using your gender lens to view these questions. But then um, we move on to the module three. After we see the story, now put that aside first. And I want we all to focus on this module three, mainstreaming gender equality and its challenges. Okay, what is mainstreaming gender? Basically, it's the activities of identify and address the gender issues in all development projects and programs, regardless of the sector or type of project, at each stage of such development from planning, implementation to regulation and evaluation. So here, mainstreaming gender, meaning to say we are aware and it's an active um, action, we identify and address the issue. So mainstreaming gender, it involves a strategy, it involves approach, it involves the process. So what the strategy, the action plan to actually achieve the target, target just now the goal, the number five goal, SDG goal. Okay, method to deal with the situation or problem. That's the approach, and the process. What's process? The step or action taken to achieve target. So there are two approach, uh, what we call the integration approach and agenda setting approach. So integration approach, uh, we go through integration approach. Gender issues are built into existing development paradigm, meaning to say there are already certain things existed and suddenly they add on the gender issues to be adapted. The overall development agenda is not transformed. So meaning to say, um, this is just an addition. The, the overall agenda still remain the same. Each issue is adapted to take into women and gender concern. Gender is added onto a project that has already started. For example, women in development component on sectoral programs and projects. Um, one of the example is that whenever we have a program, we don't really take women into consideration only after we approve a program, after we announce the mission and vision. And suddenly we decided that, hey, uh, we need some women in development uh, element there. So we, we secure some little budget. Okay, this is for women. Something like Jewa, I give you some budget. Now you do this program within this range. So these are the things that um, example how integration approach is. Whereas the another approach is what we call the agenda setting, meaning to say this one, um, it is from the start. Gender becomes part of the mainstream and reorient the nature of the mainstream. Transformation of the existing development agenda from gender perspective, woman participation as decision maker in determining development priorities, gender is included from the start of the project. Example, prioritizing women empowerment in population sector program. So agenda setting is meaning to say from the start, from the beginning initiation of the planning, or the development, gender agenda is already become part of the consideration. To make you all further understand about what integration approach um, is about, I'm actually using the picture of uh, um, normally we use this picture to compare equality and equity, but integration approach I want to discuss here. You can see that there's a game happening behind the fence. The fence was already built to separate the game area and the people outside. So you can see that there are three boys with different heights. They wanted to see the game, but they are unable because of their heights. Only one of them is tall enough be able to see the height. So what integration approach is all about is that the box is integrated into the scene as part of the solution. As you can see that um, on the first one, when, when each of them were given one box each, which is what we call equality, equal for everybody, um, the first one gets a better, higher view. The second one, okay, just ngam ngam. Whereas the third boy, although he's stepping on the box, he still couldn't see the game. So not really effective. 
So the second solution was what we call the equity. So those who already be able to see the view, he doesn't get any boxes to stand on. The second boy got one box because he's medium height. And the third boy got two boxes. So all three of them have equal opportunity to view the game. Now, interesting, we have this third picture. You can see that the agenda of having a fence is still there. But because the problem was addressed in the earlier stage, uh, they already know that the material to build the fence is not the solid uh, fencing, wooden fencing, but they use the chain link. So all the three of them, without any boxes to be integrated as solution, all of them able to see the game. So this is another sample of what we call the agenda setting from the start. They don't need the box. So I hope that one can actually give you some picture of what um, the differences between integration and agenda setting approach. So gender at the management level, how do we ensure the gender dimension applied to every level of leadership? So every level of leadership, we have planning, we have organizing, leading and controlling. So I want all of you to remember this planning, organizing, leading and controlling in short POLC. So planning, especially when doing policy, for example, you need to create the vision, mission, strategy, target and objective. So at the beginning, even at the planning level, women is to be involved. In the organizing, the organization setup, the working culture, the social network, is there a woman involved? Is there a woman in the organization chart? Leadership, decision maker, is there any woman partake as a decision maker? Communication, how is the communication between man and woman? Group or team, does woman involved as part of the group of team? Motivation, does woman and man get the same motivation? And the controlling part, the system or the process, does women taken into consideration um, in the process of doing work, human resource. I would also like to highlight this model PPD. Model PPD is um, actually present, participation, and decision making. So we want women to be present, to be participating, and also to be part of the decision making. So this is a model, what we, in short, we call them the model PPD. So the model element presence, women are present and their representation is truly, truly representational to their presence in the sector in question. Participation, women are also involved in generating ideas, providing their point of view on matters discussed, especially those that touch on women's need and want. Decision-making. Women also play an active role in the process decision-making, and all the views and advice given by them is made one of the important factors in getting the final decision on issues discussed. Okay, there are terms also that I want all of us to know. GID approach, gender in development. So what is gender in development? The goal is to ensure equitable distribution in terms of opportunities, resource, and benefits to various groups in society through specific intervention. Okay, WID approach, women in development. The goal is to integrate women in development. So you notice that I mentioned gender and I also mentioned women. So some of you might question, um, is gender in development or gender agenda or gender equality agenda is all about women? Actually, it's, it's yes and no. Why it's yes and no? Actually, women in development is part of the gender in development agenda. So women in development is actually um, more focused issues um, within the gender in development as the overall agenda. 
So these are the differences um, between the women in development and gender in development. The approaches for WID integrating women in the development process, whereas the GID is empowering women and transforming unbalanced male and female relationship. So the reason why women had become a focus here because actually for now in the current situation or in this world, woman is at the lower side of the balance. So in WID, woman is the focus, whereas in GID, relationship between men and woman is the focus. So in women in development, the problem is because there's an exclusion of women from the developmental process. And in WID, the goal is for more effective and efficient development. So the strategy is for women to be involved in project, female component, integration project, and increase women income and productivity, increase their ability to take care of their household. So basically, these are one of the uh, strategy that to include women. GID, the goal is for sustainable and equitable development. Women and men share power and decision making. So the strategy is to identify and address the short term needs for women and men to improve their condition. At the same time, resolve the long term interests of women and men. So these are the major differences between women in development and gender in development. But the two actually goes together hand in hand. So in another picture, the approach integration agenda setting. In integration, there is WID. There's also GID. In agenda setting, there's WID. There's also GID. So when do we do women in development? When do we focus on women or when do we focus on gender? Okay, some area, for example, especially in urban area where we are all modern, um, the processes is, um, I mean, women is more accepted in the workforce. So the focus shift from women, empowering women to empowering the gender in development. But whereas places, um, un, um, undeveloped places, uh, for example, you can see in the rural, rural area where women is still um, not exposed or not given opportunity to join the workforce or maybe low in education, women in development is the focus. So here it depends on where you are and what is the situation around you that decide which are the agenda suitable at that point of time. Okay, I want to talk also about five policies, women in development. Today, we're going to focus more on women in development because in this world today, especially in Malaysia as well, uh, I believe most of us is from the urban area. So maybe we think that, oh, we don't really feel the need to just talk about women. But because we are here as an architect, we are here actually join in this UN effort as an advocate. So we need to know, understand, um, from this focus of women in development before we actually jump into gender in development. So I want to share about these five policies, women in development. The first one is welfare. Second, effectiveness and efficiencies. Equality, empowerment, and anti-poverty. So welfare policy goal. The goal is to help the process of motherhood as the most important role of women in society. This is very important. We can see also even in our profession. Um, I believe our, our Fem Equity Gender Committee Chairman, um, architect Datu Tan Peying, uh, in one of the talk that she mentioned about the challenges architect, women architect face uh, when want to join the workforce in this construction industry. We have a lot of architectural graduate, but upon gradu graduation, not many, I mean, a lot of them does not continue to pursue the career. They, they decided to get married, started a family, and just leave, leave the, their education level uh, without even trying to build a career. So one of the challenges is because they enter into motherhood. 
So these are one of the goal that we, in fact, as architect, we can look into. Okay, to avoid the torment and hardship of life. This is the general um, issues that is faced a woman around the world. The next one, effectiveness, efficiencies, policy goal. To ensure development is more efficient and effective. Next, equality policy goal. To achieve equality for women in development by including gender issues in the development process. So there are some policies that we need to look into, for example, the maternity leaves. So maybe for maternity leaves, um, most of us talk about whether it's enough one month or two months or three months. So it depends on the company policy also how many months that they give for maternity leave. So that is when we talk about women, but how about in the gender perspective? How about the male? So there are some situation, for example, um, on the how to say negative um, negative side, for example, they lose the mother and the baby is there and the father actually need to take a long leave to take care of the existing family because they lost their mother. So the paternity leave then become an issue. So these are among the policy that need to be taken into account because now we are not only having just a single mother, it's very common also to have a single father. Empowerment policy goal. To empower women through more self-reliance, build a new political, economic, and social structure to challenge the exploiting structure. Anti-poverty policy goal. To increase production to ensure that poor women can improve their economic standard of living. To integrate women in development. So what are the challenges for women to get involved in development? Okay, the challenges of women in development. Okay, as mentioned before, most of the women in the world, actually a lot of them is still getting low education, lack of education. And most of them, because they are so tied up with the housework um, and motherhood, they are limited involvement in the community action and discussion. And most of them is still in poverty condition. And poverty condition, this also contribute to the um, lack of nutrition and um, deterring health. Yeah, as mentioned, they have heavy housework and they, it's their responsibility to raise children. And some of these women, not only raising children, they have the responsibility to actually look after the elderly as well. Movement, movement out in the house require the permission of the husband so this happened in certain culture. Okay, religious belief and practices. Yes, some of these uh, religious belief and practices had become an obstacle for women. The existing law, the policy, and government policy, and also past negative experience. So in order to succeed actually in gender in development, we need an integrated approach. We need a continuing education and awareness, like what we are doing today. We are actually here to be educated and to create awareness. We need a strong policy, such as the national social policy and national woman policy. And then we need a seriousness in the implementation of this policy. So the key word here is actually finding balance between male and female. For example, balance in decision-making in the family, um, the woman involved in the household finance. So it's not just the man holding the finance, although sometimes we say the man is actually bringing home, uh, is the breadwinner of the family, but the woman need to be involved as well, the household expenditure. The children's education, both men and women need to be involved in determining their children's education. The family planning, women need to be involved also in the family planning. Talking about contribution of women in the family, children's health, family meals, and family welfare, women ha must have a say. And financial income, women sometimes also help to increase the income of the household. Talking about contribution of women in society, 
women can also involve in agriculture and industry like us the women in architecture we involve in the construction industry education women also need to be educated and the neighborhood structure women need to involve more in the communal activities and we also talk about in the um, next module actually they talk a lot about the women involvement in policy making women contribution in politics women need to have a political representation why because here is where all the policy is made and most of the time policy um, awareness about women agenda is not there because of lack of representation so the political involvement, for example, our Dewan Rakyat, our Dewan Negara, the PBT, the Local Authority Council, we need women representation in this area. And when we talk about contribution women in the employment sector, industry, business, medicine, legislation, yeah, talking about um, making laws and policy um, in the medical sector, business, income, economics, yes, women also can in contribute in the employment sector. So here, the impact of the gender dimension, mainstream in development. Men and women fully involved in the development process from the level of family, community, and national development. Men and women together enjoy the fruit of development regardless of gender. So these are the impact that we are expecting to have if this um, gender dimension is mainstream. Women and men together use opportunity and potential to contribute to the development. The desired result, women as agent of change in various fields and capacity. Women as decision maker. We want women also to be part of the planners, become a manager, also the organizer, advisor, educators. But talking about that, since on the current situation now, as all the powers is held by men, in succeeding gender in development, we also need the participation of men. So here we are expecting to see men, or we say men should do these things. Men should allow, instead of mastering and manipulating, give chance to women to actually voice out ideas, opinion, because sometimes the perspective is different. Sometimes men, they are more into outdoor or men, they are more on the higher level. They do not see on the administration or on the uh, construction side, they couldn't see. So sometimes women may have a different perspective, a different ideas. This also go vice versa. If the woman is actually on the, on the higher position, the women also need to listen to men, vice versa. But for now, since we are focusing on women, we say men is the one who should be doing this. Men should strengthen and build instead of weakening and destroying. So sometimes um, in life, we also see that um, this, uh, we call the manipulation or this um, um, showing the power. So men, instead of doing that, instead of weakening and destroying, men should be strengthening the woman and sharing and collaborating instead of dominating. Okay, the implication of gender inequality in development. So when this happened, we can see that there's unbalanced development. So most of the infrastructure when, uh, in example of the Kampung Togus just now, the case scenario, we can see that there's an unbalanced development, unbalanced discussion, um, yeah unbalanced uh, awareness. All the things that the men perceive that they required for their village, they have discussed and put up in the brief. Whereas the women, they also see another side, um, the, the lack of infrastructure or the requirement for upgrade in their village. But because they are not involved in the discussion, so all their opinions is actually just um, spread among the women, but not being recorded and submitted to the district office. We also see that the implication, we can see that there's a gender discrimination. For example, in the job sector, sometimes you can hear that um, women complain that when they applied, oh, we only open this job for male. Um, we don't think that women can do. 
Uh, they don't think that women can stand outside uh, at the construction site, hot under the sun. So they assume that this job is actually a man's job. So sometimes there are certain job description that we suffer, we call, we say that we, we feel the discrimination. Violence against women, domestic violence. So sometimes, uh, for example, in not, not really in our country, but other countries, for example, India, we hear about uh, what they call the honor killing. Um, the violence against women, because the men are so powerful that whatever their opinion is, even if they kill their woman because of what they believe or because of what they stand for, uh, it become like an unspoken rules or law itself. But this is what we consider a violence because there's a, an, a not balanced power between the male and the female. So we also see um, in those places a rape case, maybe incest, sexual harassment in the workplace. This happened all around. Okay, as a conclusion, actually, we only need to remember to summarize all the I know that this topic is actually a little bit heavy because there's a lot of terms that we need to remember. Just now I mentioned GID, gender in development. I am also mentioned about women in development and the integration approach, the agenda setting approach. But actually in conclusion, we only need to remember this main point. PPD, if you remember what PPD is, presence, participation, decision-making, where? in POLC, planning, organizing, leadership, and control. So with that, actually, we, we say that we want to mainstream gender equality. And we already talked about what are the challenges. We already talked about what are the approach, the strategy. So actually, what is the target? So now I want to bring you back to the infrastructure of Kampung Tegus, back to the situation just now. Just now, I give you five minutes to ponder upon the case and um, asking you the questions. And after the presentation of this module three, now we realize that we need to actually not just involve the man. Man is important. The opinion is important. The ideas is important. But the ideas and opinion of the woman as well is important. So by having perspective and ideas from both man and woman, we can see that this is the expectation, infrastructure in Kampung Togus. Uh, when the men say that they need bridge, they need this and that, the, they need also archway for welcoming. And the woman also highlight that they need the electricity, they need the Wi-Fi, they need the water supply filter system. You can see that with the, both of them, we can see that this Kampung or Kampung Togus is actually well equipped so with that, I think I end my presentation here. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I believe that I've already explained to you what is gender streamline is all about with the case study and also the explanation of terms um, that we have just now. Thank you. I'll pass back to Camilla. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, Architect Sharon. That that thanks for the to the speaker for the insightful presentation. So okay, so we are now moving on to the Q and A session. Um, maybe Architect Sharon, you can stop sharing your screen for a while so that the participants can focus on you now. All right. All right, so okay, we have few questions, but before that, I, I have a question from my own side. So I, I'm kind of curious because this is actually a topic that not so many people talk about, right? So you mean, you yeah. mean gender in, uh, equality in terms of, especially in architecture field, I don't think people really, you know, care about it in terms of design construction field. So what makes you actually interested to actually learn and understand more about this gender inequality in the first place? Okay, what makes me interested in this gender equality? <laughs> okay, it's not that what made me interested. 
this is actually an active um, initiative by Jabatan Hal Ewal Wanita, Sabah. They actually proactively invited us to participate. Last time, I was also do not know what is the differences between gender and sex. You know, when we fill up our form, what is your gender? We say male or female. But after I joined the training, I realized that these are two different items. My interest in this topic actually only derived when I joined the training. So it is not that I, there are things that I suddenly interested. It's more like because I was forced to, <laughs> some kind of forced to into this training, but it actually opened up my mind. It actually make, uh, create awareness in me. So these are the things, the issues with, um, uh, the issues around the world actually. We do not know that we do not know this issue. We do not know that this problem exists. We do not know that this gender agenda is actually important. A lot of us just assume that, oh, okay, um, yeah, whoever come, we don't really care who are the people uh, as a decision maker. We don't really care how many women in our leadership, even in our cabinet, we can see that in our government, we don't really count how many women are there, how many men are there. We don't really have any thoughts about it. And like I said, the gender, gender stereotype is that, okay, whenever we have a woman minister, we put her in, okay, you handle the welfare, the kebajikan. So we always hear that oh, the ministry kebajikan will be head by a woman or the uh, ministry uh, handling women head by woman. But it's almost seldom that you hear that, for example, infrastructure, you, woman as the head, no. The mentality is that only a male can take the job. So these are the things that the perception that we have, um, assuming the gender roles in every aspect, in the even in uh, policy making, decision making. So what make me interested to actually go further, if that's the next question, actually is, um, it's not that what made me into this uh, gender, gender agenda, it's more like, when it, the awareness was, I was aware about this, then only I want to go further. So what makes me go further is that I realized that um, this effort actually goes hand in hand with other efforts. For example, this actually affects a lot, um, even in our architectural practice. Um, when we, okay, in my practice last time, uh, when I was still working under another firm, we need to take project brief. The reason why I give the sample of Kampung Togus is actually to show that how, uh, how is the relationship between men and female. When we take the project brief, we realize that most of the male actually don't care about the project brief and they leave everything to the woman. And the woman is the one that lists down all the things that they wanted according to what they think. So, here we can see that there is an imbalance between um, the requirement of the male um, officers and the women officers. So there are some cases also where they do not even ask the woman, they straight away just ask the big boss, which is male, and he straight away say, oh, this are the requirement, this and that, this and that. And when we already proceed with the project, suddenly there's a problem. Um, some of the user need is not addressed. During that time, I didn't know what it is. I, I do, just don't understand because we as an architect, we only think that, hey, I already done according to the project brief. So why there is a problem? But after I joined this training, I realized that, oh, there is a one part, one aspect that we, we did not look into. We forgot to use our gender lens. And now by using the gender lens, we are more aware in whatever, in the, in, even in construction, even in our workplace, even in our practice, we realize that whenever we want to make decision or consider things, we need to consider it in a lot of perspective. Actually, gender is not the only issue. Um, even in, in other things like, for example, you need to look at the elderly people or the disabled people. Gender also is one of the one of the aspects. There's a lot of aspect, but a lot of people they they tend to you know gender not so important. Maybe elderly and also disabled uh, is more important. So these are the things that make me want to be involved to create more awareness so people 
people know that this thing exists yeah does that answer? all right all right yeah. i think i think that answers my question okay so i think we can now move on to the q a box so i'm now reading the question by yo kun tan so architecture and your picture showing the integration approach seem to say about equal or equitable or whatever opportunities for all is it really like this in Malaysia or for that matter in Sabah? Um, do not forget we have NEP, which did not seem to be able to achieve the target. Okay, um, just now the integration. I know that I use the image of uh, between equality and equity, but actually the, the point of integration is not really about talking about the equality or equity is actually talking about the help um, in order to ensure that the three boys manage to see the game so the concept of integration is actually by giving them the box originally the box is not there and originally the consider the help is not there so by giving them the box is already an act of integration. You integrate the box into the situation in order for them to help. So these are the things happening also in a lot of policy. The policy do not consider women. So for example, um, uh, in the workforce, a lot of policy do not consider that women actually take, um, how to say, so many responsibility they need to go out and work and to, to find a living, to, to create income. But at the same time, the responsibility of raising the children is also on their shoulders. And the responsibility to, to um, how to say, to ensure their education, to send the kids to school is also under the mother's responsibility. In a modern setting, the father also contributes, but still in general especially in malaysia the mother still holds most of the responsibility so a lot of women because of this responsibility because of the household work because of this raising children a lot of them actually drop off from the career path and the reason why they drop off because of the policy now we can see that during mco the policy start changing there's no longer um you have to go to work, this and that, this and that, but you are able to also do work online, which helps a lot, especially women who are raising kids by themselves. But of course, in MCO, there's another challenges. Now the kids is 24 hours at home and also the education also have to run by the mother. So imagine you're working at the same time, looking after your, uh, your children doing online. There's a lot of um, responsibility held by the mother. Architect is not um, excused from this. Architect women also the same. We also um, experience the same as other women. Okay, when you talk about NEP, um, NEP is actually the government effort, which um, I know that it focused, but this is, we don't say that they are focused on whether male or female. This is focused on those B40, those are uh, whether M20, who are the people that, um, uh, people say that layak uh, to terima all the all the help from the government. This is not the topic of gender. Actually, this is more like government. They just have the fun and they have a criteria of who can have it. You can say that equal, equal. There are parts that they do it equally. There are parts that they run it um, by using the equity approach. Yeah, I hope that answers the. Uh, question all right thank you architecture and so again like i say i mean like you are you you know yourself that because this gender equality is not something it's not a topic that is talked about a lot especially in this architecture industry so it seems that there are people that actually don't really understand uh, what's the relation between between this gender equality uh with architecture so if, if there is anything that you can share with us like very simple comparison like why why is this topic important in this architecture field is, is that will that be possible so okay um it, it's a it's a huge topic actually because we can actually go from here to there to actually relate it okay if if you remember in the CPD Unlimited, there's part that I share 
why it is um, important for, for architects, especially architects, to actually use gender lens. Why our client is not just male, our client is female as well. So we have to, uh, from there only, just that part, we need to be aware the requirement of this male, the requirement of the female. That alone justify why architects need to actually understand this gender concept, uh, the gender stereotype. And if you look into policy, policy making, okay, um, okay let's say, um, not policy making, let's say I say um, local authority design requirement. They can come up with a requirement, for example, okay, um, there must be equal number of cubicle toilets. In my last presentation, I already um, explained the, the different, um, the, the challenges between men and female, uh, where their toilet cubicle is of the same amount, but there's more line on the female toilet. So in this also, we also um, talk about from there, we as an architect, we have to understand that because the way women use the toilet is already different. So if the architect couldn't understand, we tend to propose the same amount of cubicle instead of proposing the correct amount of cubicle required. So there was a study that says that if you provide one toilet, uh, one cubicle for male, you actually have to provide three cubicle for female. So the ratio is one to three. So that is just talking about design requirement. Yes, by this also, I already justify architect need to know, need to be aware of this gender um, agenda, gender issue. Okay, in another part, policy, why architect need to, to be involved as well? So you see architect, we are, before we are architect, we are also human, we are also part of the com community. And if you can see that we are professional body that is also contributing to our economic growth. So if you can see that a lot of our architect leaders, um, if you can see the uh, PAM Gender Equity Committee led by architect Datuk Tan Peying, she's very actively involved in the union architects, international union architects. She's actively involved also in this gender uh, equity um, movement or effort. Because this is important actually to, to, how to say, to empower women, not only just at the architect level, but we are acting as an advocate in this construction industry. Just talking about construction industry, actually, we, um, the PAM Gender Committee, also um, uh, initiate to conduct a survey asking the problem, especially women, um, women architect in the construction side, for example, we have to go and inspect site. Sometimes we have a site meeting for one hour and guess what? There's no proper toilet for women. And everybody know that in an uncompleted building, the surveillance is very bad. So sometimes women feel unsafe to be at the site. So if you are not aware, you are not aware that, hey, there's a gender issue. Some of the women are not, um, how to say, considered in the process of developing method, how to run a construction site. Because of this, um, a lot of site offices, they do not provide. But we are thankful that um, as we go and advocate and we, we create awareness among the contractors, um, a lot of contractors nowadays, they actually provide a proper area for women, especially for the site club, which is most of them is women. Imagine you are just like two, three women against like hundreds of male workers. So you need to provide a safe environment for this woman. Yeah, that is just construction uh, field alone. You can say something to do with architect, but nothing to do with architect. Yeah, but this is where architect can actually have a say. Okay, contractor in your tender document, please allow extra toilet for the moment. That's in another example. So yes, now I already give a three example. It is justifiable that architect, we as architect need to know about these gender issues. Okay. All right, thank you, Architect Sharon. So I can see that some of you raised hand, but it would be helpful that if you guys have any questions, or if you want to discuss on any topics that we are discussing today, kindly jot down your questions in the Q&A box or in the chat box, and I will read the questions to Architect Sharon. 
All right, so moving on. So this is a question for myself. So um, in your earlier presentation, you actually showed the picture where you attended um, the program by uh, Jabatan Hal Ewal Sabah, right? So, and I can yeah. see that Mun also joined the program as well. So I, I, I'm kind of curious, like after all the discussion and presentation, maybe talking about women in development, gender in development, um, me, I know what kind of um, response do you get from the men that join the program? Like, do they actually like, oh, I mean, they need to help the women in development or do they like, do you fight a lot during the, the event? Okay. No, we don't fight. <laughs> but it was an um, eye-opening um, event uh, where, where the woman will say their thoughts. Okay, because it's not just the man who is unaware about these gender issues. The woman as well. We also do not know about it. When I first um, joined the training also, I was not really aware. I mean, I heard about it. It's like, People always talk about SDG, sustainable goals. We heard about gender equality. You know, like there's some feminist movement or even the LGBT community movement. They talk about this gender equality thing. During the time for me, it's just like, oh, it's their thing. It's just the movement. We don't really know um, in depth about it. But when I joined the training, uh, it's very interesting because our trainer, actually start to ask us question about what is the difference actually. Among the questions was, um, I remember the first question that they asked um, for those, um, okay, uh, just assuming that you're going to have kids. So do you want a son or a daughter? Why? They straight, he straight away asked us why. And then a lot of people, they say, okay, son, because they kasi turun nama, like, and then daughter, because they will stay with you. They are more kind to you. But that is, when we realized that after he explained, not all daughters are kind. You know? Some of them are really, you know, tough girls. So that is a gender stereotype. And we learned there that, oh, what you say just now is actually gender stereotype. Some of them say that I want girl because they will look after me when I'm old. No, the girl don't look after you. Only the boy will look after you because they are head of the family. That is again a gender stereotype because not all boys or not all girls will end up looking after their parents. So we know that for a fact that there's a lot of issues. Sometimes you expect your, your boy to look after you, but in the end, your girls is actually the one looking after you. That is gender stereotype. These are the things that we learn during the training. So again, like um, when you say that between male and female, even in my own chapter committee, my Pem Saba chapter committee, when the form of invitation was first issued to us, the first thing that they say inside the committee was, oh, we need to send women architect. The perception was whenever this gender issue is highlighted, it's a woman problem. So they sent me and me and architect Tracy. Yeah. So the two of us went and that time, um, I, the other governmental sector already um, stopped away about this gender. So they are sending men. 50% male, 50% female. So it's actually quite balanced and it's actually quite interesting to hear um, ideas and opinions from the other side. Okay, the male, the, the response is, um, um, how to say, uh, actually very, um, some of them also do not understand why am I here? Like, why do I need to understand all this issue? But when we talk in deep about what is gender and what is um, what is the importance, yes, we we realize that okay, this is important because if you see the gender um, the gender how to say the gender agenda, it says that most of the um, decision making power is held by the men. Most of our participant is actually a high level officer. They're like me, it's just the, the uh, NGO, the professional body. But most of them is from the Jabatan Ketua tree, some of them from the airport airline, some of them from the local authority. They are all high position officers and they are there actually willing to spend their time to understand. And suddenly they realize that, yeah, all this while when making a decision, the boss or the male boss is actually very authoritative. They don't really give chance for 
any other to actually voice out their opinion. So not only we learn about gender there, we also learn about the techniques of how to actually conduct, um, to actually get the opinion from the others. Yeah, it is very interesting. Not much fighting, if you, if you ask me. It's more like everybody is suddenly aware. And yeah, we decided that, yeah, true, it's important. We need to learn more. And because of that also, some of us actually who are really show interest, we are selected to be the trainer. Instead of just participant, we have been selected to become the trainer. So here I am. I'm also the trainer of Jewa, and I'm also sharing what I know here with them. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much Mark, for that sharing. So, okay, there's another question in the Q&A by Azrin Azli. Great presentation, very interesting. What are your thoughts on this in Employment Act development, especially on part nine? employment of women, especially in our built environment industry. Thanks. Okay, in built industry, employment of women. Built industry, uh, architect women, actually when, when the job opening, um, it depends on the company actually. In Sabah, I don't really feel that there's a discrimination when I look for job, in fact, the company is the one looking for me. I think because there's a lack of um, architect coming back to Sabah. So whoever architect that come back to Sabah, they quickly you know, grab the name whenever they, they found out that, oh, there's a graduate architect, quickly call her for interview. So we don't really feel uh, between male or female. Basically, there is a demand in the job uh, sector in the built industry. Um, yeah, we, uh, the demand for architect is there. So woman or man is more on the merit of skill works. Yeah, we, we look into that. What can you do? Um, are you suitable to be hired in this company? We go through interview. There's not much discrimination in the urban setting in Sabah. Okay, but if you talk about employment of other sector, yes, maybe, um, you can see but. The, the discrimination is not, not just among the women, actually. The discrimination also could be experienced by male. Some sector, they only want women, but some sector, they only want male. But all of us know that, you know, like sometimes you cannot really choose, a, choose the job or choose your location. And inside, within your location, there's only certain job offers. And whenever women face the discrimination, um, these are the issues that we actually wanted to highlight. Then the question will be asked, why do you feel that women cannot do this job? Okay, if we focus into, um, let's say just one company, uh, let's say we assume that this company does not want to hire women because they thought that, oh, women ni leceh lah, nak hantar dia pergi site, susah. So, with um, some company might feel that because they have hundreds of male employees, they do not want to think about tackling women, um, women uh, employees. Because for them, some of them, they decided that um, handling women is actually extra or additional cost. Now, this can be one of the challenges because um, not only us advocate and trying to create awareness, trying to create um, uh, this, um, how to say, this effort. But also the industry player also need to take part of it in order to make this happen. You can see that in terms of our, our country, the economic growth, if we are to compare ourselves to the Western country, there's still a long way to go. So in fact that we wanted to say to every industry player, please do not limit yourself. We want um, every male and female who are available, who have the right education, who have the right skill to join the workforce and to make our economy so higher so that we can also achieve at the level that we want. We also want to achieve a high GDP. We want to join the G20 uh, country as well. We have, of course, I believe Malaysia, we wanted that. We wanted to see our country or even our state, our city to be developed. We want that. But in order to do that, a lot of policy that we need to relook into. There's a lot of um, 
um, if we go one by one, it's actually quite hard, but a lot of policy does not support um, women involvement. Not to say that the workforce, okay, sometimes it's not to say that the workforce or the employment doesn't offer the job, they offer the job. But because women are tied up with all the works, like I mentioned just now, the household work, the housework, the responsibility to raise the children. And because of that, because there's no help or there's no um, proper policy to actually help this woman to, to, how to say, to manage between this um, responsibility, they couldn't contribute further. So these are one of the issues that we need to look. I, I don't have the solution actually, but we together, we can give ideas and look into this. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. So we are almost time. So I'm gonna just read one last question that we have in chat. It's from Chin Lin Chan. So to gain recognition and to get heard, women should show that their views are relevant. How do you see that female architects can show that they can help to improve the design brief and design standard example like the toilet provision standard you mentioned yeah so this will make the discussion more meaningful so this is the last question we'll take okay how to make your voice and views heard just now i i reminded that the most important is the ppd the presence participation and decision making okay Whenever you want your views or your, your ideas to be heard, number one, you yourself need to be present. If you're not present, for example, like today, you're not in the seminar. You can think of a lot of things, but if you don't type it in the chat box, whatever your view is, whatever your opinion is, we will not hear about it because you did not make yourself present. Not only you pre pre uh, present yourself, not only you are here, but you also need to participate. You need to actually open up your mouth. You actually need to voice out your opinion. Um, a lot of women, they tend to keep quiet themselves because of um, what we call the man handling. Um, they were dominated by the men. The men actually don't allow them to speak. Okay, I, I experienced that actually in the site meeting where I'm the only woman and during that time, they considered me as a very young architect. I just graduated, attended the meeting, and all the contractor, the engineer, the con uh, even the, the client side, they send male representative. So when they talk during the meeting, they actually almost ignore me, but that's only the first time. I make myself, my presence heard. I mean, notice by them by actually opening up my, my, my mouth. I actually voice out the issues on site. I voice out, um, we correct the meeting. I tell all oh, the architect, architectural issues. I voice out. And it's not that they do not want to, to ignore me. They suddenly realize that, oh yeah, this girl is actually the architect, the main consultant. Whether, no matter how young she is, no matter that she's the only woman here, we need to kill her out. Because of the authority I hold, I'm the architect. I know the roles and responsibility that I'm holding. So same here, woman, when you are out there, you should know where your authority is. When you're in your family, you are the mother. Okay, you have a father, you have your husband next to you, the father of your children. He have the authority as well. He have to make himself present and um, heard by the children he may have to make the authority himself. But you as a mother as well, you need to make yourself present, your presence is felt. You also need to have your own opinion. You also need to voice out the things that concern because some of the things that you see are not seen by others. So PPD, you are present there, you participate, you open up your mouth, you voice out your opinion and you are partake the decision making. So if they want to make a decision, you also have to have a say. This one, everybody know, in terms of in our country, this is very famous. If you have Pilihan Raya, both men and women vote. So that's how if uh, PPD, if you want to understand how it works, it's the same way. You have to be present at the polling station. You have to participate, pergi pangkah, the polling form, 
And by doing that, you are participating in the decision making. So in terms of uh, voting, women and men is equal. So yeah, that one is a good example of how women and men can impact, can decide the government. Okay, so I think, I hope that answers the question. All right, so I guess that will be the last question, but okay, so we have like, we have about left, um, we are left with about four minutes. So I think this one, I'm just going to give way to you, maybe just play to say last few words to the participants regarding this topic, or maybe what are you hoping uh, that the participants get from this webinar? Okay, what I hope uh, the participants will get is that, um, yeah, number one is the awareness that this issue exists. And the awareness that um, by doing this, we are also participating in the, um, achieving the sustainable development goal. Uh, which is not about just gender equality. There's a lot, there are 17 global goals. I hope uh, we spend some time to read about it. By doing that, actually, uh, I believe that we can see that where we can contribute in the community, where we can contribute in the state level, or even in the national level, or even in an international level. There's a lot of work, uh, family and friends, so our fellow architects, there's a lot of work. Malaysia is still considered a developing country. Gender is just one of the small issue, but should not be neglected. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say to all the participants. I hope you all learn. And yeah, perhaps if you have any other question, you can always um, email to um, contact the PAM, um, our organization, and just post your question. Uh, I believe they will try to contact me and um, we will try to answer the question our best. Yeah, I think that's all. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. All okay. right, Kamila. thank you. So thank you so much, Architect Sharon, for a very insightful sharing and for being able um, you know, to create this awareness that not so many people know. And I hope the participants get something from today's sharing. So. Um, just a quick reminder, make sure you guys memorize or you guys copy down the sign in and sign up code because by the end of this event, I will put the link that leads to the Google form. So make sure you fill out the form to make sure you get the CPD points. And I guess that's the end of our webinar today. Thank you so much, Architect Sharon. But, but I would like um, for you to stay so that we can have a group photo. Is that okay with I you? Okay, sure. All right, great. Yeah. But before that, let me just launch this sign up code for the participants. All right. Thank you so much, Architect Sharon, for sharing. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.